Well, let's start from the very beginning. So a sensor generates some kind of signal, I don't know, temperature signal, for example, and uh, without machine learning, uh, you will be able to apply a set of rules. If it reaches a certain threshold, then, I don't know, bring uh, some kind of signal or uh, light up an LED and inform us about that. That's very simple uh, logic. And, uh, and if you want to try to uh, extract additional pieces of information, for example, the temperature sensor is going to indicate uh, how the temperature changes over time. And that temperature sensor, along with a CO2 sensor, might be in a container of bananas uh, going across the Atlantic. A model, a machine learning model trained on a, a sufficient set of data would be able to predict how much time does these bananas have until they get spoiled. So that would, uh, in turn, inform somebody that they could go in and, and crank up the AC inside this container, for example, because they know that the, the transit is going to take longer. So that's a completely different type of intelligence. Traditionally, it is being solved with the neural network. So like, uh, and it really doesn't matter. Is it TensorFlow, PyTorch, Kafka? It's the different wrappers around the same piece of mathematics. <clears throat> Those are beautiful technologies for many things. And they do excel at uh, image processing, working with text, as we have seen the advances in the large language models. But they have certain limitations in terms of sensors.